Well, hello, Oddlings. Welcome to tonight's salon. I am Dheeraj Gorwani. I work for the American Academy of Ophthalmology. It's a bit of a mouthful. But um, it is a medical profession for those who are uninitiated about it, which allows doctors to legally poke people's eyes. Uh, ophthalmology is also a word that I have still not learned how to spell correctly after two years in the job. So uh, it's not your fault if you don't know. Uh, anyway, just before I signed on for tonight's show, and uh, I was not sure what to talk about around then, and I stumbled upon or discovered my topic for today at work. I run the Instagram channel for my company, I'm in digital communications, and one of the topics I came up with was something to do with the Museum of Vision, which will be ready in 2020. This is a plug. <laughs> I do not get paid for it, though. It's, it's not on a digital platform, you see, so I don't get paid for it, but I digress. Fast per usual, for those who know me. The old uh, body of, uh, sorry, the, the topic today is how ancient uh, Indian physicians discovered advanced surgery. So when you look at these photos of texts, these are the Vedas. If you've heard of the Vedas or Vedic texts, you, you, you might have an idea that these are old, ancient things. But when I say ancient, I mean 1500 to 500 BC is what we're talking about. That's the period called as the Vedic period. And it is a collection of texts that is known as the oldest uh, compilation uh, that comprises the Hindu religion. So th these are our books. This, this is our Bible, so to speak. And um, the official division of the Vedas themselves are in four parts. The Rig Veda, the Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, and Athar Veda. The contents of all of this this entire collection is basically hymns, rituals, chants, prose, poems, commentary over various topics relating to the human condition. The object of discovery, however, for today's talk is a specific compilation of texts called the Sushruta Samhita. It is, well, let me go with the Hindi pronunciation, Sushruta Samhita. Now, it is one part of this, this particular text group, Sushruta Samhita, is one part of a trilogy which forms the Ayurvedic medicine uh, body of knowledge. Now, take a moment to soak in that this Ayurvedic body of knowledge is 5,000 years old. Now, with that in mind, let me take you to a timeline of India. Now, India is home to one of the world's oldest civilizations, the Indus Valley Civilization. We've now just learned that the Vedic period was symbolized by the creation or compilation of these Vedic texts uh, that are a physical symbol almost for Hinduism. India has stood the test of time when it comes to preserving its heritage despite various influences, some good, some very bad, that showed up on its shores. You can see how things worked out. Um, the golden period, however, in Indian history was when the Muslim Mughals ruled over India. It is why we have the Taj Mahal. Uh, but no such beauty uh, to show for the British rule. I wonder why. Um, bygones? Um, on the fence on that one. Now, Ayurvedic medicine. You all, I'm sure, especially living in the Bay Area, you must have at least heard the word Ayurveda, or Ayurveda, right? Okay. okay. So Ayurvedic medicine has lasted through millennia, as is evidenced um, by all your familiarity with it. The term uh, actually translates to life knowledge or life sciences. And there you go. I was waiting for that one. Thank you. Um, and it is basically the collection of practices that are holistic in their approach with, with healing, and it incorporates uh, medical knowledge with spiritual concepts combined, and also herbal remedies in, in treatment, as well as prevention of diseases. Uh, it was practiced in India for centuries before the Greek physician Hippocrates, I just learned the spelling, um, uh, between 460 to 379 BC. And 
So uh, basically, we are talking about a period that is before that. So prehistory, ancient, uh, things that probably didn't come out to the Western world mu until much later. Now, the surgery of, uh, and this is a quote I'm gonna give you, the surgery of ancient Indian physicians was bold and skillful. A special branch of surgery was dedicated to uh, rhinoplasty or operations for improving deformed ears, noses, and forming new ones, which European surgeons have borrowed. Now this quote is from Sir William Hunter, uh, who, uh, who was the chief of operations when it comes to surgery in, in British-occupied India. <laughs> well, then he gets credit, right, because Sir William Hunter. Anyway, so um, Sushrita Samhita, this compilation of texts that you see up here, this is just one example of how this exists. Um, this compendium or collection is the oldest text in the world f on plastic and corrective surgery and is highly regarded as one of the greatest portions of that trilogy that comprises Ayurvedic medicine. The other two being Charaka Samhita, which is the medicinal aspect, not surgery, uh, uh, which preceded this body of knowledge, and uh, another one called Astanga Hridaya, which is basically a, a comprehensive account of both the, the, the medical part of it and the surgical part of it. So the text mentions various illnesses uh, and, and, and use of herbs and preparations for cures with, along with complex techniques of surgery. Now, the Sushruta Samhita devotes chapter after chapter to surgical techniques listing over 300 surgical procedures, 120 surgical instruments, which you'll see in just a second, in addition to the 1,120 diseases, injuries, conditions, and their treatments, and over 700 medical herbs and their applications. So this is a sound body of knowledge we're talking about here that dates back to the BCs. Now a little close up of this text. The Sushruta Samhita uh, touches upon virtually every aspect of the medical arts. Thank you. Uh, but was unknown outside of India until around the eighth century uh, CE. Uh, by then, it was translated into Arabic by the Khalif Mansur around 753-774 CE. And even then, however, the text was unknown in, uh, largely in the West until the late 19th century when the so-called Bauer manuscript was discovered, which mentions uh, uh, Sushruta by name in a list of sages, because he was a sage, uh, and also includes a version of the Charaka Samhita. So this was a selective compilation. Uh, and it is known as the Bauer manuscript only because it's named after someone named Hamilton Bauer who purchased it. Uh, and, and this was an artifact to him, which was written on birch bark, which is how it existed. So it, it gives evidence that other similar works may have existed that just dispersed throughout time. So who was Sushruta? Now, little is known about Sushruta. Uh, his life works, uh, his, his, the work of his life is focused on the application of medical techniques and does not really include many details about who he was or where he came from. Even his birth name is unknown and we call him Sushruta, which directly translates to renowned. Can I throw in something? My name is Diraj, which means patience. I do not answer to that name though. <laughs> Even his, so uh, all that is known uh, for certain about him is that he practiced medicine in northern India around the region of modern day uh, Varanasi, which is Benares in British, uh, by the banks of the Ganges River, one of the holiest places in India. Now, he was regarded as the, big, the, the greatest healer uh, of his time. Um, now, ancient surgical science was uh, known as Shaila Tantra, which means uh, manipulating or bending an arrow to your, to your whim. And what that basically translates to is the, the, the techniques that he had developed over time. Now, uh, we're talking about, you know, suture techniques that were not close to what you know as today. He used to use the head of ants to close up on sutures. 
and he invented the practice of cosmetic surgery. So when you look at these tools, these are all the tools that he would use, uh, uh, and the, these are dating back to that time. Now, the first cataract surgery is said to have been performed by Sushruta to remove cataract from the eyes. He would operate on the patient, let, let them heal with a bandaged eye for about three to four days. And this is kind of what you find even today. This is the recovery period of cataract surgery. Now, now this is an example, the photo that you're seeing is of rhinoplasty, the thing that he's really known for. Now, uh, he also broke down the phases that, that are involved in a typical surgery. You're talking about excision, scarif scarification, puncturing, exploration, extraction, evacuation, which is basically cleaning, and then final close, which is suturing. All these basic principles of plastic surgery are, an imp are, are find an impar uh, important place in Sushruta's legacy. Now, how are these texts evolved? How did he know all of this? Now, take a second to realize that we're talking about a time when school was nothing but a, a sage going to a guru and, and just imbibing whatever that guru has to teach. Now, the, the teacher for Sushruta was a man named Divodas. He was the greatest physician, and apparently his teacher in the oldest known university known uh, in the world, one of them, uh, in, in an area called Takshila, which is close to Banaras. That's where he received his informa uh, this information and he d um, disseminated it to Sushruta as a verbal way of communication and he recorded it. So also note that this original knowledge was coming from a place of meditation and revelation that was received from that high state of med meditation. This is a sound body of knowledge that came from basically thin air. I'm a believer. I mean, this image is from the Academy of Ophthalmology and it talks about cataract. We're able to deal with this situation because of something that existed thousands of years ago. Now, this is an image of people bathing in the holy waters of the river Ganga or Ganges as we know them in the Western world. Uh, now, we know that science begs for evidence. And we may not have the true source of how this knowledge came to be, but do consider that the idea of meditation is something that people have experienced where some revelation might come to you or a breakthrough moment. Now, so, so with that in mind, we don't have to be so cynical. We don't always have to seek evidence as been, you know, explained in this entire talk. So, it, with that in mind, allow yourself the chance to take a moment, shift your perspective, even if it's a moment of bathing in the shower, you know, when all the thoughts come to you. Sometimes a project will suddenly find a solution. So the idea of entertaining that and allowing something to transform your way of thinking. So on that note, I say, raise a glass to art and science. Thank you. <laughs>